Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's try out Imperator Rome. This is the very first campaign I'm going to record for YouTube. I do have at this point, I must say, about 50 or so hours of gameplay experience. Um, the lovely folks over at Paradox did give me early access to the title and I've uh, taken that time to, to play quite a bit before we started recording anything. So, um, that being said, let's dive in. This is going to be somewhat of a... Um, a tutorial-esque type campaign. I'm gonna try to just explain everything I'm doing as I do it, and um, I'll be reading comments and answering questions and you know, taking my time to, to explain uh, all these new mechanics and everything that's cool and fun about this game. So, um, we're going to probably... I think I think we're gonna play as Fer, Fer, Fergia. Fer, Fergia. Fergia? I think it's called Fergia. They are one of the two nations that the, uh, the developers think are hard at the start. Fergia is the most central of the successor empires, boasting a sizable army, navy, and economy. Antigonus himself is the oldest of the successors and is viewed with distinct enmity by his peers and neighbors. With a large number of dependent states, Fergia must balance a bitter diplomatic situation, disloyal subjects, and an ailing ruler in order to succeed. So, um, I mean, they're not one of the smaller nations, obviously. They're actually quite large. Uh, there's Egypt, the Seleucids... Uh, Mau Mauria, something like that. And then, of course, there's the uh, Rome, who gets scripted claims, which gives them the ability to really consolidate all of Italy very quickly. And then Macedon, which is uh, also quite strong in this area. But, um, despite their size, I, I do think that the game is right in saying that they are considered hard. Because, um... Succession can be pretty difficult in this game, and keeping your subjects loyal is... Kind of, kind of reminds me a bit of like Crusader Kings 2, um, but it's it is different. So that being said, let's just dive in. We're gonna play as uh, as Fergia. We're just to play in regular mode, and uh, there's really no reason to enable Iron Man because with the pre-release client that I'm playing on, uh, achievements are not possible yet. So we'll just play on regular mode. Alexander the Great in Babylon. 18 years ago, the Argiad king Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Ale Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates, styled as the Diadoshi. Or I guess you could call that, maybe it's uh, Diadoshi, I'm not sure. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the Empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diadoshi will continue. Perhaps it is up to Fergia to decide how they will end. The die is cast. Alright, so our goal for this campaign is going to be to take the decision to reunite Alexander's Empire. Um, and in doing that, we will be able to do pretty much everything that needs to happen, I think. We're going to fight big wars. We're going to manage succession, we're going to manage trade, we're going to manage army composition, battles, all that kind of stuff. So, that'll be the end point for this campaign, most likely. I'm not going to be looking to do like a world conquest or anything. Um, so, that all being said then, let's just dive right in. So, we are Firgia. We are the Hellenistic major power of Firgia. First thing we're probably going to want to do is go ahead and establish our military oratory and oratory ideas in order to match our, our country's requirements in order to access this this activated bonus. Um, if we were to take something other than those specific types, then we would miss out on monthly tyranny point one, uh, national citizen happiness plus ten, and two of each monarch point per month. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to lower the music volume a little tiny bit more. And uh, let's just briefly go through the uh, the interface, in case you've uh, never seen this game before. It's your very first YouTube video you're watching on the campaign, or on the uh, the title itself. A treasury is uh, obviously ducats, dollary dues, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. It's monies. Uh, we have manpower, 84,725. We have military power, also uh, they look like little red, red hats. Uh, we have civic power, 200. We have oratory power, religious power, stability, 10 aggressive expansion, and we started off with zero tyranny. Um, this is actually the only nation I think I've seen that starts with aggressive expansion. I could be wrong on that, but um, I've not I've not loaded any other nations that do have it. So again, back to this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off by choosing a military idea. 
we have three to choose from. As we get more technology, once we get martial advances greater or equal to six, we'll be able to take this one, and these are available at martial 12. It's easy to forget that these become available. There's no specific pop-up that says, hey, you have access to new ideas. When you hit oratory, uh, martial, civic, and religious ideas at um, level six. But um, for now, we'll just choose from one of these three. We can do Morale of Armies plus 10, Shireen cost minus 25, or Ordered Retreat, Reinforcement Speed plus 10%, and Army Morale Recovery plus 5. So, I haven't actually done a, a test on it yet, but in Europa Universalis 4, your maximum Morale of Armies is what determines the amount of morale damage that you inflict. Since this is a Paradox title, and it is based on the Clausewitz engine, I think it's strongly, strongly likely that the morale of armies battle damage is going to be the same as in Europe Universalis 4. So I'm going to take morale of armies in order to try to maximize the amount of morale damage we inflict. We need to take two oratory ideas. We can choose between monthly corruption, point one, uh, monthly general loyalty, monthly admiral loyalty, and improve maximum opinion plus 33%. So uh, we are starting off as a nation that does have quite a few subjects. We have this list of subjects right here. We've got Athens, the Nesiotic League. Uh, it's actually harder to, to go this way than it is to go this way, so we'll go from right to left. Uh, Bam Bambus, Bambus, Sidon, Arados, Byblos, Samaria, Judea, a lot of them, basically. So I think it's likely then that we're going to want to take this maximum improved relations so that we can try to maybe integrate some of the subjects at some point. Um, I don't think our current ruler has any corruption. We will need to, to do some corrupt things uh, in order to keep the empire stable. So let's go ahead and just pre-take this so that we can utilize the corruption decay over time. And then, um, as much as I'd like to have that monthly general loyalty, I think we'll take the maximum improved relations. So now that we have matched these, we now get this little green check saying that, hey, we get monthly tyranny point one and uh, National Citizen Happiness, and then those extra Monarch Points. So we generate quite a bit extra. Just quite sizable. Hey, okay, Omen-wise, um, how do you explain Omens? Omens are once every five years, roughly. There are modifiers to Omen Duration. So in this case, it's going to be five years plus 15%. Um, omen Power um, affects like what the things do. We have access to eight of them. We can get 2.7% Discipline, Aggressive Expansion Change, 0.02, 5.5% National Manpower, National Commerce plus 11, Research Points plus 5.5, National Unrest, National Tax, or National Population Growth. In this case, we currently have quite a few cities that do have some amount of unrest. What unrest does in Imperator is it causes you to gain reduced province loyalty. If, you've, if you're coming to Imperator from playing mostly, say, European Universalis 4, this might get confusing at first, but you'll adapt pretty quickly, I think. In Imperator, individual locations are called cities, and then provinces are effectively states in Europe and Universal Sport. So this is the city of Soatra and the province of Lycaonia, right? So cities comprise states, states comprise regions. Uh, sorry, cities comprise provinces, provinces comprise regions, and then regions are part of, you know, bigger areas beyond that. So, when you have unrest in a province like this, it causes the province to potentially lose loyalty. I'm just going to go ahead and start off with the National Unrest minus 1.1 to just mitigate any succession and like unrest problems that we're going to be having. Sound, I, I have not actually tried playing as this country before, so I don't know how hard it will be, but I think we'll manage to get through it just fine. We only have unused trade routes in our capital. Okay, right, of course, let's just dive right into uh, super complicated things. It'd be fun. Um, Okay, so trade. <laughs> we currently have two out of three trade routes. Uh, we're currently importing silk as well as some wine. The green check mark here lets us know which ones we can import currently. If you click on one that's red, you can still see the people that could provide it and how close they are to acceptance. So it's possible we could get some of these that are sh currently showing a red check mark, um, but you have to check first. Green ones means that there's definitely someone who will currently accept, or you could trade within your own country. So, um, first off, let's see what kind of units we're able to build. Do we need to trade for any strategic resources? Can we build cavalry? We have multiple locations we're allowed to build cavalry. Can we build camels? No. Or elephants? No. Okay. 
Can we build uh, heavy infantry? Yes. So we don't have access to war elephants or camels, but we have access to most of the other strategic goods necessary to form uh, the backbone of our army. So with that being said, then I'm going to go for... Let's see. Our citizens right now are at 100% happiness here. So I think we're doing okay happiness-wise on citizens. If possible, one of my favorite starting trade bonuses to get is this this Papyrus. So we can get the research points bonus. Um, how close are we to acceptance with that? Negative 8, negative 5, negative 5. So this is with Egypt. What is our relationship with Egypt? We're likely to be enemies, I imagine. And we do need to conquer some of their land if we want to reunite Alexander's empire. We need these provinces down here. So, probably not a good idea to spend civic points, uh, civic power, to start trade routes with Egypt. So, the other person that was available for Papyrus was... Ionia? Let's go ahead and bribe him. We're going to give him 10 ducats. That'll raise his opinion by 25, and hopefully that'll be enough to allow us to ask, ask for some Papyrus from him. He now has five reasons for acceptance. So, this gives research points plus 20%. The specific reason why I like that is because, okay, trying not to overwhelm people here, but citizens are the only unit or the only population type that generate research points. First, you take the the raw amount of research that they generate, then you multiply it by their, by their output efficiency, which is affected by their happiness. Then you get a multiplier here. And so this is a very strong increase. We went from a 105% overall multiplier due to the stability bonus to 125. From there, you then go to here, and then that generate that that amount you generate relative to the total population of your country determines your research efficiency ratio. Currently only at 22.9%, which is very very bad. We need to get this up quickly. Beyond that, then you multiply it by the research speed bonus from your inventions and from the martial skill of your researcher or the civic skill of your researcher etc so that research bonus from papyrus is right in the middle and it's like it, it just stacks the extra research value quite well so i like papyrus as a as an early trade good next we're going to spend some of our civic power on inventions or possibly on uh, just more trade routes probably more trade routes let's see um do starting experience. We do need to hire some troops. Got tons of manpower. Uh, Diplo rep could also help out, although it's not nearly as strong as it is in Europe Universe House 4. It only gives plus one reason for people to do things. Um, tech speed plus five is quite nice. That applies here. It's 100%, 110%, so that would apply to all four of those. Um, you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to get the, uh, the trade routes first. Okay, so economy-wise, we're currently making 13 ducats a month. We've got an army, we've got a fleet. We're not currently using the fleet, so I'm gonna just lower maintenance on the fleet. We're not currently at war, I'm gonna lower maintenance on the forts. Um, we're currently getting some income from our tributes. We could reduce the income from, from them in order to raise their opinion of us. Or we could reduce their opinion of us in order to gain more income. One thing I like to do early on in the campaign is switch over to free trade, which gives province import routes plus one at the expense of national commerce income. Feel like you know we're losing one ducat a month in gross income in order to have access to more trade routes in every single province that's so many more trade routes and trade is very very profitable so we can now go back to syria back to three out of four there's no more available papyrus but basically by making papyrus present in this province we now get that research points bonus to all citizens in this entire province every one of these cities it does not apply to the next region over. See how here we don't get plus 20%. So we would need to have Papyrus available in this province as well. But there is no more additional Papyrus available right now. The capital province is the most important because when you have a surplus in your capital, it does provide bonuses to the entire country. So um, that's one of the reasons why trade can be very, very powerful. Uh, I'm going to turn this off right now. Um, for some reason, the game starts you off allowing you to trade away your capital surplus bonus. I really think that this should just start off turned off so that you will not receive trade offers from other nations that would cause you to lose your capital surplus bonus. But um, anyway, it's turned off now. So back to Sirius, uh, sorry, Syria. 
After Papyrus, I like to go for Precious Metals because it affects Citizens' Happiness. However, we currently have 100%. You can't go above 100%, so there's no reason for that. Surplus of Vegetables in the capital. Third row of that tooltip. Reduces the cost to move slaves around, which is very powerful. So, let's go ahead and get some veggies from the Hellenistic local power of Cappadocia. It's also worth mentioning that even though we're importing these goods, for some reason you make money for importing things. This will give us 0.25 ducats each month. So, if you think about it, economically I took a roughly one ducat penalty to switch over to this free trade option, but we have access to so many more trade routes that if I just spend the civic power to establish the trade routes four times, we'll end up making that ducat back. And we also get the benefits of the traded goods in those provinces. So you can see why I, I prefer trade in this case. Um, right, let's try to establish the trade routes. So we have zero out of two based on population. If you consider it like this, if I do a trade route here, it, the benefits are only going to apply to two plus three plus two people. So we want to go based on total population, find the big high pop regions and focus on getting them their trade routes established first. This one has 0 out of 1 with 54 citizens. Uh, let's see if we can find something that helps them out. Here we do have citizens who are unhappy because they are not the right culture. Um, and they're also not the right religion. Got some Hebrewish, uh, Hebrew Jews. We got some Hebrew Canaanites and uh, Aramaic. Aramaic. Uh, we could pay diplo points to... Sorry, oratory is the right term. Oratory points to assimilate them. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and see if we can get access to some precious metals in order to get that local citizen happiness in this state. I I'm going to keep calling them states. I mean to say province. I apologize. Uh, here we have negative seven reasons. Um, let's see. Opinion minus seven. Macedon has negative 14, so that's half of the difference. So if we send a gift getting 25 opinion, that's going to be, what, 12 more reasons? It's 31 ducats. So I think it's worthwhile. And that was apparently not quite enough. Hmm. What just happened there? Rival with ruler, aggressive expansion. I feel like this, uh, their opinion of me just actually updated as I did the click or something, and now it's actually lower than it was before. That's kind of odd. Okay, well, if we can't get access to precious metals for local citizen happiness, uh, let's just take... any trade good, really, that we can get. We do have... Um, here, let's just go with this one. We got 50-some slaves here. Let's just get some... olives for local slave happiness, assuming that they have issues with opinion. Yeah, they're not at max. So we'll get some olives. And then Cyprus. Let's just also get some olives. And we'll do a couple more trade routes just to get them established. We'll come back to this later on, but I feel like I've spent a little bit too much time on it already. So just want to kind of move on and get these things established and, you know, unpause the game at some point. Do one more trade route with our current number of power. Our 41 citizens here and some number of slaves. Okay, all right. Um, we still have our bad research ratio, but it is slightly improved after raising some happiness or getting that research point multiplier. I think we were like 22% before. Um, I guess, even though we haven't let the game unpause at all, I'm going to actually take a short break here, look around a little bit, try to assess the situation, and see uh, what we should change and what we should do next. And then we will unpause and go from there. So, hope you guys enjoyed the campaign so far. I'll look forward to seeing you again in the next episode, and I'll see you soon.